So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about a few of the commonly encountered problems in Poisson regression. Um, the first one is over dispersion. I'll, I'll start with that and get into that in a moment. And the second common problem is excessive zeros or zero inflation. So first let's talk a little bit about what over dispersion is, how we can check for it, what the common causes are for it, and what the common solutions to um, addressing it are. A quick reminder that in Poisson regression, Poisson regression, there's this assumption built in that the mean is equal to the rate that we estimate, and also the variance is equal to the rate that we estimate. Okay, in other words, the mean is equal to the variance, or the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the rate. Just to give an example of what, what that means is, suppose that for a given set of X's, so for some, someone who's a male with a certain number of chronic conditions and, and so on, the estimated rate is 9. Okay, so on average, 9 visits per year. Poisson regression is also going to assume that the standard deviation, sorry, that the variance for that is also 9 uh, visits um, per year squared or that the standard deviation is going to be 3. So on average, there's 9 visits per year with a standard deviation of 3. Okay, that's what Poisson regression assumes. The mean is equal to the variance, um, or the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the mean. So over dispersion, what that is, it's when there is more variability than expected. Or stating that in another way, it's when the variance is greater than the mean. Taking this kind of set of numbers here as the example, what it would be that is that if for a set of x values, right, so people who are the same, uh, let's just say males with a certain number of visits and certain um, self-perceived health status and so on, our model estimates that they would have nine visits per year. Our model also estimates that the variance in the number of visits is nine, or the standard deviation is three. Over dispersion would be if for that set of people, the standard deviation for the number of visits was actually larger than three, okay, much larger than three. It would be over dispersion. And over means more. Dispersion is another word for variance or variability. Right? So more variability than expected. A way that we can check for this, there's a, a few ways, but a few quick ones. You can calculate something that gets called the dispersion parameter. And what this is, is it's Pearson's residuals squared divided by their degrees of freedom. And it's also approximately equal to, okay, so waiting at a quick check on this, is if you look at the summary output um, in R, if you take the residual deviance and divide this by its degrees of freedom. Okay, they're going to be approximately equal. Not the same, but this is a very quick way you can check. So when you get the, the model output, you can take the ratio of the residual deviance to its degrees of freedom. And if this dispersion parameter is larger than one, okay, and much larger than one, it implies there's over dispersion. If it comes up to be 1.1 or 1.2, 1.3, you're probably okay. Once it starts to become, become something like two or three or even five or six, okay, that's telling you there's over dispersion. I can take a moment to mention the usual causes of why this tends to happen, as well as mentioning one of the solutions to addressing it. First, the usual causes. One of the most common reasons you'll see this is that the model is misspecified, and I'll say exactly what that means in a moment. Um, generally what that means is the model is missing something um, important. Okay, your model is not accurately representing the relationship in the observed data. So you might be missing an interaction term. So if you take a look at the 
British doctor's data. You can go back and look at that on your own. If you look at the model that used just the smoking and the age categories, you'll find that there is overdispersion. And if you explore that further, what you notice is it's missing an interaction term. Okay? There should be an interaction term between smoking and age category. It's not there. Model being specified, you can also think of this as there is some lack of fit. If you do a goodness of fit test, it's not fitting well, right? There's something missing. So you might be missing an interaction. You might be missing a nonlinearity. Okay, and again, so maybe um, there is a nonlinear relationship between one of the x variables and the log rate, and you haven't addressed that. Okay, so that might be another reason why this pops up. Um, you might be missing just another important variable. You might be missing an important x variable. So these are generally ways that the model can be misspecified. Okay, there's something in your model that's missing. A second really common cause is excessive zeros. For a large number of, large number of people, the event just did not occur. Okay, and that's going to actually be the, the second, I'll label this as one, the second common common problem encountered in Poisson regression. So we'll explore that next. Excessive zeros, what is that? How do we identify it? Um, what are some solutions to addressing it? And the third, this is kind of a cop-out statement, I guess, but it just is. Okay, and so just a reminder, the Poisson distribution, which is the underlying probability distribution for Poisson regression, it's just a theoretical probability distribution. Okay, it might just, it might not be a good fit in some cases. Okay, there might be more variability than expected, or the variance may be larger than the mean. That just may be the case. I'm just going to mention the most common solution. There are other approaches, and some of them are probably listed in some of the course notes and so on. For the sake of our, our video and what we're getting through, I'm just going to mention the kind of one. So the most common, common approach is using negative binomial regression. In our course, we're not going to get into um, talking very much about negative binomial regression. I will say a few things about it. The first thing I'll say is that in the R script that's provided to work through this stuff, there is uh, a lot of code there fitting negative binomial regression models, comparing it to Poisson regression model and so on. So that's there for you to work through and explore if you want. It's not going to be part of our assessment, but it's in the R script and you can really dig into that if you want to. If not, kind of the quick version, Negative binomial regression, it's very similar to Poisson regression, except the big difference is that it estimates the mean or the rate, so the rate at which events occur or the average number of occurrences per unit time. So it estimates the mean or the rate and the variance separately. So in other words, it gets the one parameter estimating the mean, or estimating the rate, and a separate parameter estimating the variance. Okay. Where Poisson regression, you estimate just one parameter. Right? You estimate the rate, and that's your estimate of the mean and the variance. So it's very similar to something, you can think of it like linear regression. Where linear regression, we estimate the mean, and then we estimate the residual standard error, right? or our estimate of the variability separately. We get those as two separate estimates. So that's essentially what negative binomial regression is doing. Um, the kind of very surface level way to think of it is that it is Poisson regression, or pretty much Poisson regression, but allowing us to get a separate estimate of the variance. So we talked a little bit about the idea of dispersion and how we can check a dispersion parameter, which is the sum of the Pearson residuals squared divided by their degrees of freedom, or it's approximately equal to the residual deviance divided by its degrees of freedom. So we can take a look at getting that out of R. Here I'm going to manually ask R to take that Poisson model that we fit, find the Pearson residuals, square them, sum them all up, and divide by their degrees of freedom. So we can see that here. And if we take a look at the dispersion parameter, it's 6.7, indicating there's over dispersion, or more variability than a Poisson model would expect. You can also see, if we look at the summary from the Poisson model, we can see the residual deviance is 23168 and its degrees of freedom is 4398. So if we take the residual deviance divided by its degrees of freedom, the approximate dispersion parameter is 5.27. Again, quite large, much larger than 1, 
indicating there's over dispersion. Now let's get back to discussing some solutions for this. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.